more decor items have arrived. This is a nightmare. Are we gonna be able to do this by ourselves? Seriously, what did you say? They can't find the order? Let's see how this goes. I'm a little worried. I landed in Miami, guys. It was a four hour flight. It always feels a lot longer than it actually is. Although on the way back, it's gonna be worse. And I can't tell you how many people are at the airport. It is insanity. I mean, literally insanity in LA and at Miami International Airport. Now I'm off to find my assistant who flew in from Orange County and we timed it perfectly so that we would land at the same time. So here we are. Can't wait to show you everything that's gonna happen in Miami. It's gonna be lots of fun. By the way, I completely forgot that Miami is the kind of airport where you will literally walk, I'm not even joking, like three to four miles. I mean, it feels like four miles, but it's literally at least one or two miles to get to your gate and vice versa to baggage claim. So it is a long walk and I'm carrying a lot of, although this trip is only two days, I don't know why I have so much stuff. I've got an entire handheld and baggage. Okay finally made it. I forgot to show you my airport look because I thought these jeans were kind of cute. I just got them and I'm going to link them below in the description section. They're great for travel because they are comfortable. Here's the view. There's a giant pool. I mean, Miami is so changed. Everywhere you look, people are on top of each other. It almost feels like Tokyo. I mean, I'm not even kidding. And last time I checked, the whole state was sinking, so I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen here, but I love it. The weather is 90 degrees. It is so hot right now, which is eight, nine o'clock at night. It is 90 degrees. We're gonna go to Brickle Key and um, have coffee. Funny story, I used to live in Miami for a short period of time on the island of Brickle Key, so this is gonna be really weird to see it again. Nice to see you, Rafaela. So, what's why is it called the George? It's called the George because you know George Merrick was the founder of, of Coral, Coral Gables. Gables. Okay. Back in 1925, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Um, and in the projects that MG and Anidio has developed, um, we've always he's always wanted to like continue with with George Merrick's original vision. Oh, and great. since this is the last- The last piece of land in Coral Gables. The last piece of land in, in Biltmore Square. Um, what better way to honor his name? Well, we can't wait to get our fingers on this project. This is gonna be so good. And there's 7,500 square feet yes. found each. Big. Big. So these are not just like, these are townhomes that are massive, bigger than residential home. So this is gonna be our next project. And we're gonna follow it along this whole way. So those that are following get to see the development of such an incredible project in the last piece of land in Coral Gables. Basically, you can't develop anymore unless you tear something down and there's nothing Literally. left to tear down. And uh, and it's just gonna be the bomb. Perfect. We need Boteros in our project. So Miami has changed so much. When I lived here, there was no traffic on Brickle. There was like four buildings on Brickle. And now there's like 10 million. So it's really crazy how much it's boomed and how much development there is. Everywhere you look, they're developing more projects. Now we're gonna have breakfast and discuss our project. We just had a very successful meeting about breaking ground in a project by the name of the George. We're gonna be designing the townhouses, but each townhouse is about 7,500 square feet and there's a row of them in Coral Gables. And we're gonna show you this entire process of how we make selection of our furniture, how we decide on 
the type of um, kitchen we're going to do. We're working on the layout right now with the architect and the architect is really incredible so we're going to be having meetings with the architects and the builders etc so that we can um, design what is probably the most premium most luxurious project in Coral Gables to date. Okay, we've arrived at the Four Seasons for our meeting. Cute, huh? Wow, that's cool. I want it. It's so good. So now we are in the beautiful entrance. This is where all of the clients are going to come in for reception. Yes, I miss my doggy. I miss my miss, dog. You don't miss your husband? Uh, I guess I miss my husband too, but I do miss <laughs> my dog. Dog. Show me my dog. How's my baby? Hi, mommy's baby. Hi. Oh, I love you. Oh my God, he's so cute. I can't take it. So we're in panic mode, and I mean panic mode. Guys, look, this is the only decor that arrived. These are just our books from Amazon, and all our real decor is literally on a truck and not planning on getting here until Thursday. So today's Tuesday, we specifically told them we need the items here by Monday, which would have been yesterday. And they're telling us now that it's arriving on Thursday. And guess what? We're leaving on Thursday. So that's not going to help us at all. If the client finds out, I don't know what's gonna happen. This is just par for the course, I guess. I don't know. Why do these things always, always happen? Oh my God, I'm trying to get a hold of SIA so that we could get this stuff delivered. And if we don't, what's gonna happen, Diana? We're screwed. We're screwed. We are absolutely screwed. And I'm trying to get somebody on the phone that has power. Assistant, I would like to know why the items have not arrived on time for our styling. <laughs> Whose fault is it? It is the vendor's fault. Because didn't you specifically say it had to be here by Monday? and it's not here. Can't we pick it up so that we have more control over this? Because we have to, we should have received these items yesterday or the day before. So if we wait till four o'clock in the afternoon and never receive these items, we're gonna be in trouble. If you wanna pick it up from the, uh, if you wanna pick it up from the terminal of Miami terminal, yeah, definitely. Oh, great. Yeah, we can definitely stop it, so, and we can, have, we can do a weekend assignment, okay? Thank you so much. The lesson that's learned. If somebody tell you something's not gonna happen, you must intervene. You can't just say, okay, I guess it's not gonna happen. You have to call, you have to harass. I called the numbers that I had. I called, I called a few different numbers. I Googled whoever I needed to Google and you just push, 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 push and you try and intercept and get things done. That is magic. Are my teeth ready? Nice, let's see. Pretty amazing. Literally get a mold of your teeth. So for those of you who don't know, oh, hello. Hi. I'm very well, thank you. Dr. Appa is probably the most famous, actually he is the most famous dental cosmetologist in the world. He's got offices in Dubai, he's got offices in Los Angeles, New York, and now Miami and he travels between these four destinations. Hardest working guy I know. And his clients are regular people, of course, but there's also a lot of famous clients, such as all the Kardashians, all the Jenners come here. Those are probably some of the high profile ones and basically everyone in Hollywood who wants to have beautiful teeth. Anyone who has beautiful teeth, you know, comes to Appa. Okay, so now we are at the Ritz Residences and we are here to check on our residential project here. And this is a beautiful residence. I have to show you the staircase, which I'm obsessed with. Right here. 
Look at that. Absolutely stunning. And the exterior is also great because it's a boating dock. So if you've got a boat, this is the place to live. Every residence, or not every, but a lot of residences have their own docks. I threw on this black blazer that I wore. I'll link it also below. I think the shape is really good. I wore this in Vegas and we're going to a very well-known Japanese restaurant that is inside of the Kimpton Hotel. And we're gonna go to Zuma, which I've eaten here before. And I really loved it. And since it was walking distance from where we are, we came back. The Aston Martin building actually is next door. You guys know I stayed at the Kimpton in Paris, which I really love. Now we're going to Zuma. I'm gonna give you the vibe. Here's an update. We were able to get the items sent to the terminal, which is really great. They're in Miami. We called and we said, okay, we're coming to pick up. And they're like, just so you know, and you guys, some of you may know this, we cannot assist you unloading this pallet. So <laughs> little Diana and I are gonna go over there, dress it up, and we're gonna hope to be able to not only pick up these items in an Uber, but unload them ourselves. So, Let's see how this goes. I'm a little worried. Guys, I'm standing on our balcony. I'm gonna show you this view, it's insane. When I tell you it feels like Tokyo, you will understand why. Literally, like where are all these people and where are they coming from? Anyway, here's a quick update. Our items finally arrived and they are in Miami, thank the Lord. Except the problem is that no one's going to help us unload these items off of the pallet. How are we gonna unload these items off the pallet? Are we gonna be able to do this by ourselves? Look, I know from interior design that these guys like drop off these. I just don't know how big it's gonna be. And what if it's like just, just little Diana and I with like this monstrous palette of stuff that we have to pick up with an uber so god wish us luck we're going there now and if we don't have our decor it's going to be a problem because we literally flew all the way to miami for the decor all right so we made it to some far away destination that nobody knows where we are and now we're trying to find our decor goods and they better be here we don't know how we're going to take them let's see what happens does that door open and we can't even get in anywhere. Can't get in, don't know where we are, and we've got an Uber waiting. Mr. S-A-I-A, -A, let us in. He said, just show up. Is it the other side? I don't think there is another side. Hello? Anybody home? Okay, so now we're gonna drive around the warehouse. I think what we need to do is find a docking station where the guys are with the pallets and hope we see our name on these boxes. I've lost Diana. She's like on a mission to break in. Barb wire, watch out. Okay, we finally got behind this, these gates. And this is, by the way, where all of your goods arrive in these containers, these 20 foot, 40 foot containers. Let's go over there. We're stuck in the middle of nowhere land and we can't find anyone. There. It's thinks the life of a designer is so glamorous, but this is what it is. It is literally you in the trenches making things happen with so much stress. Make sure this is what you want to do before you sign up. I'm sorry, what did you say? Seriously, what did you say? They can't find the order? Holy Jesus. I'm having abdominal pain now. There's hundreds of these containers 
and it could be literally anywhere. And we're running out of time because today's our absolute last day. No flights back. And uh, in fact, Diane is going on another trip, so we can't even stay longer. Honestly, me looking for it is, I don't even know what to say. Look at, look how deep these containers go. They are 20 and 40 feet deep, full of products, and it could be on any one of these trucks. I don't know if it's gonna be this. It's definitely not kegs. Although at this point, this might be the only solution. Ask him what truck number it's on, and I'm gonna look at every one of these trucks. Truck number two? Okay, I'm going to two. I'm going to two. See how there's numbers up here, guys? How it says 33 up here? Supposedly ours is number two. Well, that is very interesting. I'm gonna go to two. We think it's a number six. We are pretty sure it's a number six. And this lovely lady is going to help us find it. So the driver said he found it. It's in the middle of the number six container. And he is removing the items from the beginning of the container to the middle of the container. And then he's going to drive it up to where we are. I said I would meet him over there. He's like, are you filming? I'm like, no. All right, guys, we finally located everything. It's a miracle. We're loading everything up and hopefully it'll fit in the car. Everything is jam-packed. Well, thank you for helping us today. We could not have done this without you. The entire car is packed. I'm getting a little claustrophobic. Of course, the client doesn't see any of this stuff. He just thinks, or she may think, oh, it's so easy. This just happens easily. And that is how we portray it. We never share the struggles or the last minute dramas. We just say, oh, we've come to decorate. Poof, and we're done. But it was a challenge, I have to say. A couple sleepless nights, Diana, I'd say, get to fly all the way from California and to leave without getting your job done would be devastating. Considering our client has flown us all the way out here and paid for everything. Like we can't not deliver. Now we can't get out with the gate, but you know what? Considering what we've been through, that's nothing. <laughs> nothing! All morning yesterday, all day yesterday, a special shout out actually to Jeremy of Saya and Amanda. They made this happen. Like customer service was above and beyond, which is very rare in the freight forwarding business. So I really want to give a shout out. We unloaded, unpacked all of these items. And now we are going to start styling. We're getting closer to finishing. We still have a long way to go. All right, we are getting closer, guys. We've done a little bit here. I still have a lot more to do. It doesn't seem balanced enough. So I just wanted to show you the progression of how we do this, how we do groupings. Here we have an open book on an acrylic stand. And we've got a little trio there. And we're just gonna keep styling until it's perfect. Notice how everything is balanced. We've got black over there, so then we went with white here. Um, we decided to do black here. We wanted to bring in some wood to warm it up. We know that um, Alpha loves Ferrari, so of course we wanna personalize it to his taste because Ferraris, he has them, he drives them, he loves them, and he loves football, so we brought in, you know, this NFL book. Then we put Kim in here because we know Kylie and other family members are also clients, so that makes sense. He loves art, so we've got some art books here, and voila, this is the final result. We sourced these from all different places, I will link some of these items, the ones that I can find. I thought this was really nice. This is great. This is the Karen Rotfield book. It's a fashion book. And here we've got um, World in Vogue, Tom Brady, Icons, Rolex, Michael Jordan, Ferrari. And then we did the Neutra book, open on an acrylic stand. I really love to have one book at least open so that people can peruse through them. 
These are wooden totems. They're so nice. And you want to bring things of different textures. Like this is wood. Then we've got some pottery. We've got some um, ceramics. We've got some clays. That's when it comes together when you mix your materials. Nothing should be too similar. All right, now we're gonna go and do the rest of the office. Okay, we styled the conference room. We wanted to keep an all white theme just to keep it really nice and clean. This is our conference room. Here we styled all of the products that are for sale for clients to look at from the sonic brushes to all of the private label products. Okay, here's finally the office, all done. Apparently Diana is the new boss. Hey, What's up? is this your office? Yeah, you like it? I like your decor, I like your backdrop. And uh, yeah, I'd like to get my teeth done, please. Okay, ask me if we're exhausted. Yes, we are dying. This all started very early in the morning. We got our styling done. And now I'm gonna meet some friends for dinner that live in Miami that I've known for literally my entire childhood. So it's nice to be able to catch up and we're gonna go to Coconut Grove, which I haven't been to in at least a decade. So we're gonna go to a restaurant, relax. The reason I'm bending down is because I wanted to show you my outfit and then I started talking, but let me show you the outfit. So this is it. I don't know if you can see. I'm wearing my Eero skirt, which is one of my favorite purchases this season. I can't even tell you how much I've worn this skirt and I love getting great staples. Um, I'm wearing a bustier that is very similar to the Magda Butrim one, but this one's from Zara. And um, I'm wearing my um, mango jacket that you guys know. I have these really cute Celine little mules, which I can't seem to be able to show you. And I'm wearing my Jenny Bird hoops, which I absolutely love because they don't bother my ears because I get, I'm like hyper, I'm hypersensitive. So I will link these as well because I think they're like the perfect size and color if you guys are interested. But what I wanted to say is we went to Coconut Grove and it is such a beautiful city. And I was with friends who actually live in Miami and they're in real estate and developers and whatnot. And they told me that Coconut Grove is the place. So for those of you who live in Miami that watch this channel, is this, is this true? Is Coconut Grove the spot? $3,000 a square foot for property in Coconut Grove. It's absolutely crazy. The prices are, more than what you would pay in Beverly Hills. So something's going on in Miami, guys. So I have a feeling I'm gonna have a lot more projects here because already I feel like I'm coming here every month and there's so much newness and developments and everything that's around this town. So anyway, I had so much fun showing you guys around. I hope you guys like the office. I wanna know which part of the decor or which part of this vlog interested you most and what you wanna see next. More behind the scenes, more fashion, more uh, sourcing. Like what is it that interests you in these vlogs so I can bring them to you? Because there's so much that I can do because so much happens in a day. So I'd love to get your feedback. I love you guys so much. And I'm gonna give you a big kiss. Peace out and I'll see you guys again next week.